hierarchy of the Big Ten Conference. Right, you bring in USC, who's headlined by Juju Watkins, who's a contender for National Player of the Year. And then you bring in a couple of experienced teams like Oregon, who's had success in the past. UCLA's always had a good basketball program. And Washington, who's an, a, a program who's trying to find their way into the Big Ten and find their way as a basketball program as a whole, right? So you inject that, and that's really going to shake up things at the top. Well, if Nebraska wants to return to the Big Ten Tournament Championship like they did a season ago, it has to start tonight with a victory against the Omaha Mavericks. Tip-off coming up, officials tonight, Chuck Gonzalez, Tiara Cruz, and Ziomata Cruz Johnson, and we are underway in Lincoln. Allison Widener dribbles it across the timeline. One of the most important players on this Nebraska team. There's Britt Prince feeding it inside to Markowski. Quick paint touch, quick bucket for this Husker squad. And immediately jumping into a press. You could see they wanted Markowski on an early seal, take advantage of the size early. Nearly a turnover on the inbound. Got to get it across half court. They do. Here comes Kaichis into the paint, kicks it back out. Omaha looking to get that three-point shooting involved. One of the better shooting teams in the Summit League. Here's Grace Cave. Last year's scoring leader for Omaha, guarded by Prince. Looking for someone, that's Olsen, who gets it taken away by Potts. Great vertical challenge by Potts. Just gets both the arms up and uses her length to contest that and get an early block. Potts out on the perimeter, been working on that three-point shooting, is able to find Allison Widener. Back out to Callan Hake, drives on the closeout, gets inside, tries to float it up, missed it front iron. Good defense that time by Omaha, as now Grace Cave will slowly bring it across and try to set up the offense. Drive strong against the freshman Prince. Got it inside to Gardner, looking for space. Off the window, couldn't fit it through. Back and forth action early on, on opening day. Widener uses the arm, and it's an offensive foul. Yeah, pretty easy call there by the official on the baseline. Widener extends it, trying to get into the lane, pushing the pace. He doesn't take a great angle at this right, so now that the space is cut off by Grace Cave, extends that right arm, that off arm, and just gets the offensive foul. That's a great initiation by Grace Cave. Some more pressure on the inbound by this Nebraska defense. As Kite just gets nearly tied up, might have to take a timeout. And that's a steal for Potts. Ball still loose. And now, after the change of possession, looks like we have a whistle and a 10-second violation. Unable to get it past this pretty aggressive Nebraska defense so far. Yeah, and look at the way that they're trapping, right? They're bringing the forwards forward. It's, po it's Potts and Prince have been the ones with the, long, with the most length on this Nebraska team, have been the ones that are initiating the trap. So with that, all that length in the front court, you put pressure on Omaha, especially Grace Cave, to handle the ball and get it beyond half court and break the trap. Coach Williams a few days ago praised the defense of Britt Prince and Natalie Potts in the exhibition last week against the Doan Tigers. Here's Callan Hake going left hand to the rim. That's a great setup right there. Markowski goes out, and then Hake draws Gardner, and Gardner does not have the quickness advantage against Callan Hake, just hesitates and then gets to the rim. More pressure and a reach in foul that time on Natalie Potts. Really hounding defense early on. Mavericks barely able to get it past half court here. Yeah, so look at the setup here. Callan Hague's playing the rover in the middle of the floor, trying to take away any deep pass. Markowski's just going to sit at the half-court line. Now they're going to fall back into a man. Olsen over to Kaichis. She's not afraid to pull it from that distance, but elects to go to Grace Cave. Cave and Widener matched up on the perimeter. Nice behind-the-back move. Tries to get it inside. Tough attempt by Moore is rejected, and here comes Nebraska once again. Widener pushing the break. Gets all the way down below the rim, kicks it back out. Hake with the mid-range. Bounces up, couldn't rim in, and off the loose ball, goes out of bounds, and it's Omaha basketball. And look at Gardner, Moore, and Olsen on the inside. They're ganging up on Markowski, keeping her away from the boards. This is what we talked about in the pregame. The more bodies the Mavericks can get in the paint, the better to take away this Nebraska size advantage. Mavericks quickly move it across the timeline. Here is Aaliyah Moore, one of the top rebounders a couple of seasons ago at St. Francis before she transferred to Loyola, Chicago. First season in an Omaha Mavericks uniform. Cave drives in, left hand layup off the window and down. What a shot. That's a tough angle, and Grace Cave gets to her space and knows that she can get it off the window if she just finds the angle, goes into the body of Weiner and finishes strong. Potts stops on the wing. Nice pass inside on a cutting. Allison Widener, and she goes up with the layup for another bucket. 
That was a dime by Natalie Potts. Just sees that the defender is hip level with Widener and throws it with confidence. Great pass and great finish. It is a track meet out here right now with the Nebraska pressure defensively. Cave from way outside, barely touched iron. Huskers with an advantage coming across the timeline. Allison Widener coast to coast, gets it to Potts, quickly up and in. And it's an 8-2 lead for Nebraska early on. And at this pace, it favors Nebraska, right? When they can speed Omaha up and get them up tempo and create deflections, that's when they're the most comfortable. The Milwaukee native Moore puts it up over Markowski. Good defense. Callan Hake with a head of steam. Gets to the mid-range, into Potts, quickly once again, and it's Natalie Potts, two for two today, and that forces a quick timeout by Omaha. 10-2 start for the number 23 team in the country. Yeah, and a great inside seal. It's a Dayton seal, right? What Obi Toppin used to do at Dayton, where you seal the defender off, put the high hand up, and use your size advantage. Great pass, great job by Hake to get to the middle of the floor and create pressure on the rim. That way she's able to have an easier passing angle to Potts, and she finishes off that easy touch with a great layup. Aggressive defense turning into offense for the Big Reds so far here today. We'll have more from the first quarter coming up after this on Big Ten Plus. Jacob Schrantz and Justice Rohde back with you in Lincoln for Nebraska and Omaha. And Justice, let's get to the keys to the game, or also, as you call it, the road map. Yeah, let's talk about the road map to victory. First for Omaha, they have to get on a run early, right? They haven't gotten off to a great start. They're down 10-2 at the six-minute mark. Get on a run early. Defense, defense, defense. That's the thing. You know you're at a size disadvantage. Find a way to scramble around, get deflections, and cause havoc. And for Omaha, control the tempo. This is fast pace. They can't have it that way. Slow it down and make Nebraska defend for all 30 seconds of the shot clock. That's important. For the number 23 ranked Huskers, dominate the boards. They're doing a great job of that already. Let Markowski and Potts eat on the inside. Get the guard play in there. Control the boards. Inside looks early. They're already ticking that box. Potts and Markowski have to get layups and early paint touches. Establish the inside presence. And play at a fast pace. They've got that down to a T. Force turnovers. You're already trapping Omaha. Play up tempo and make them get really reckless with the ball and make decisions they shouldn't. That's how Nebraska will find the roadmap to victory. The Mavericks a season ago, the worst in the Summit League in points allowed per game at over 81 per contest. And here today on opening day in 2024, Nebraska has poured in 10 points in less than four minutes of play. Coming in off the bench, you see Alberti Rimdahl, as well as Kendall Moriarty and Amaya Hargrove. A couple of newcomers on this Husker team. Quickly off the inbound, here comes Olsen. Deep into the paint, pass to Cave, short-armed the layup. Moriarty taking it, giving it to Britt Prince, the true freshman with all that potential. Back out to Markowski. Dribbles into the paint, left hand and off the glass and in. That's a great job by Markowski. Sees the lane and just attacks right off the hip of the defender. Get into the lane and find a way to get to your angle. Britt Prince with the interception and now contact, loose ball away from the ball as Aaliyah Moore takes the offensive foul on the turnover for Nebraska. Yeah, and again, it's careless stuff like that, right? So Hargrove's got to do a better job here. Knows Prince is going to the rim. Hargrove's just got to get out of the way and let Prince get to a floater or let her get to the right side and go extended finish on the outside. Just don't draw two defenders there and cause a lot of havoc. Still no shot attempts for the top 30 ranked recruit by ESPN in the country this year in Britt Prince as Nebraska back out on defense. Into the corner, here's Lauren Perry, who was a bucket in Community College at Lakeland the last couple of seasons. We'll see if her offense translates to the Mavericks here this year. Powell and Prince up top. Good steal by Moriarty as he, she chases down the loose ball and some contact late. I believe a foul as well. 
And that's on Aaliyah Moore, kind of chasing after this loose ball. Yeah, it's just a hustle play, and in the end, she ends up getting the foul call. But you could see the length causing problems for Omaha early as Nebraska is getting into the passing lanes and using those long arms to create deflections and turnovers. An 8-0 run for the Huskers in nearly the last two straight minutes of action. Prince cuts to the rim, and off the window, she's got her first points in a Husker uniform. It just looks so effortless, doesn't it, Jake, when Prince is slicing to the lane as she gets another shot attempt here. Draws a foul on that time as Moore with some contact near the restricted area. Britt Prince had 12 points on just five field goal attempts in an exhibition last week against the Doan Tigers. She's someone that can fill it up, but she doesn't have to shoot it very often. And like we said, it just looks so effortless, right? When she's able to just beat a defender with a top foot jab, get into the lane, and then you get to the finisher comfortable with on the right side. And then there, playing with her head up and looking for the ball constantly, she gets a deflection, and now she's at the line shooting too. That's just heads up basketball and having a great motor and an eye for how to get your buckets. Nebraska's ceiling this season definitely raises if Britt Prince is able to contribute right away. And just like that, she knocks down two straight free throws, and she'll check out to bring in Allison Widener. Jess Petrie in there as well, checking in on the free throws. The Australian forward for the Huskers as the defensive pressure continues. Mavericks have to try to get it across the timeline. Outlet pass all the way down, and a layup attempt doesn't go. Good pass that time by Ford, but did not convert on the bucket. Here's Moriarty with numbers. She'll stop and give it a Petrie. Petrie with the cross, gets to the paint, scoops it up. Couldn't quite finish it, but I believe a shooting foul was called. Yeah, Harriet Ford just caught late sliding her feet, right? She's got to do a better job, and Petrie's going to reject right there, right? So they, she fake like she was going to the dribble handoff to Widener. It's into the lane and then just extends. Ford's just got to read that and seal the body a little bit better and then get vertical. Right there, you can see the body contact, and then Petrie's able to just flip it up. Petrie's first try at the stripe is no good, but Jess Petrie last year, 3.8 points per game, played in every game as a true freshman a season ago. Expected to be a big-time contributor in 2024. Couldn't quite convert on either of the attempts. As now here comes Alana Powell with a head of steam through contact. Drew a foul as well. And I really like Powell's game, right? She's an aggressive rim-first guard, right? So here she's thinking, get to the rim, find a way. She goes through the frame of Rimdahl right there. And this is a player in Alana Powell who is a top 10 assist leader nationally in community college last year, can facilitate as well as get ahead of steam going to the rim. Really exciting player for this Mavs squad. Her first free throw, not quite. 16 to two lead for Nebraska halfway through the first quarter. We'll see if Alana Powell, a 76% free throw shooter a season ago, can get the Mavericks back on the board. Missed it short. Goes out of bounds off of Nebraska. Hargrove wasn't quite able to collect that rebound. 12-0 scoring run for the Huskers in the last two and a half minutes. Mavericks offense really struggling as Powell spins and gets it slapped out of here by Petrie. Yeah, and again, just driving into the trees. Powell's just got to do a better job of just spinning the hesitation, right? So against Widener, she gets her on her back hip and finds a way into the lane, but she goes right into the funnel of Petrie, right? And that's exactly where Nebraska wants to go, funnel the guards into the bigs and create a size disadvantage. Inbound play gets the ball in the hands of Grace Cave. Back to Powell. Cave up top with 10 to shoot. Driving in against one of the better wing defenders on this Nebraska team, Kendall Moriarty, and it shows up right there. Great contest at the rim, and now Moriarty heads down to the other side of the court. Drives right, gives it to Rimdahl. Post touch for Hargrove through contact. Missed it a little bit short. Good defense that time by Ali Stevens coming in with her hands up. Yeah, great contest by Stevens, and when you go one-on-one -on -one against a post defender, even if it's a freshman like Hargrove, you just got to come up with that stop. Pick six for Petrie, and for Nebraska, another steal. Long outlet pass, another one taken away for a moment. Good spinning pass there from Perry, though, as Hargrove, uh, Powell rather, is able to get them on the board. How about that little Cirque du Soleil falling off, and then you just dish it over to a cutting Powell. That's a nice play by Perry. A lot of scrambling offense for Omaha as the three-pointer misses from Moriarty. 
Mavericks moving it in transition. Lauren Perry now stops and pops. Couldn't make it off the back iron. Rimdahl collects the rebound, and here come the Huskers the other way. High pace offense from both of these sides early on. Yeah, somebody's got to slow this down and get a good shot right now. Just a lot of frantic looks at the rim. Just getting your offense. Petrie picked her dribble up, was in danger for a moment. So Allison Widener will set up the offense with 10 to shoot. Deep outside against Powell. Works to the elbow. Steps back. Jumper up. Missed it front iron. Perry with a hop in her step. Down the lane. Right side and through for a bucket. And those are the kind of looks that the Mavericks want, right? When you can get in transition, let Perry go one-on-one -on -one against a guard, let her do what she does best, get to the rim and create chaos. Post-touch for Petrie. She fades and shoots, couldn't finish. So Cave speeds ahead down the right side, looking for an option, gets to the baseline, shut off. Ford holds, now drives right through Petrie, posting up. Backs her down, hooks it with her right hand off the window. What a finish from Harriet Ford, the freshman. And Ford 6-3, right? So she can use her frame and just seal off Petrie. And right there does a great job of spinning and then re-spinning to establish position and give herself a good angle with that hook. Hargrove to... And a three-second violation. Huskers will turn it over. And quite a few substitutions coming in. Logan Nisley, Britt Prince, and Petra Bojan coming in for Nebraska as Mar Vidal will join the court for the Mavericks alongside Cora Olsen. As Omaha inbounds it to Olsen, she'll drive it across the timeline. A lot of Huskers around her. Good screen by Ford to get her some space. No one there for the rebound, though. Bojan collects, and here comes Britt Prince. Steps it back, still has her dribble, now gives it to Potts. Potts to Moriarty. Drives the closeout, gets right side, and turned it over. Powell right there in the passing lane. She's got Nisley to work with defensively. Back outside. Vidal for three. Not quite. Olsen able to save it off the body of Prince. Ball still alive. Good spin move. The pump fake from Ford. And Prince, a Potts rather, able to grab it. And it is back and forth this whole quarter long. Yeah, and now you can see that everybody's starting to fight for these rebounds, right? Omaha on a 6-0 run over these last two minutes and 20 seconds and a large part of that, they've gotten one-on-one -on -one rebounds. The rebounding is the key part. They've been able to get box outs and get Nebraska scrambling in the offensive set. Nisley drives in, got it poked free. Good poke that time from Cora Olsen. And see, here's the thing. That's, that's what you get when you gamble, right, is sometimes you're going to – get into the lane, right? And for Cora Olsen to allow her to get into the lane, finally you gamble on a reach around and then you try to poke it out. But if she continues to do that and Nisley keeps the dribble, that's going to lead to a lot of bad things. So Omaha's got to be more sound defensively. Offensive foul. So the Mavericks will take the ball with a minute six left. First quarter, 18 to eight lead. And now Omaha on a 6-0 scoring run. Officials talking. And let's go to Olivia Davenport now with more. Thanks, Jake. Yeah, Nebraska, we've seen almost every player on the floor. Everybody but Kendall Coley has gotten some minutes. Logan Nisley and Petra Bojan coming in a little bit later. And then for Omaha, sticking with their core in Grace Cave and Cora Olsen. Thanks, Olivia. As now 60 seconds in counting, first quarter. Powell gives it to Stevens. Back to Powell. She's really been that offensive initiator in this quarter. And in Offensive foul turns it over for the Mavericks. Yeah, it's an illegal screen on Morgan Gardner, right? Just stuck the chicken wing out. Look at this. Makes her frame bigger than it actually is, right? When you enlarge your frame beyond what it should be, that categorizes that as an illegal screen and offensive foul. Britt Prince, the cross. She goes behind the back. Good pressure, though. Potts drives right down the lane. Off the window and down. And one for Natalie Potts. And she's got a chance for a three-point play. Right, and Potts poses so many problems as a basketball player because she's 6'2", but she's versatile, right, with that rip move. Gets right by Stevens. Powell is late arriving, and then the great touch by Potts to get it off of the window and give herself a chance for an extra at the charity strike. Potts has yet to miss here today. Three for three with six points. 
And we'll see if the reigning Big Ten Freshman of the Year stays perfect this time at the stripe. She does, 21 to eight lead for the number 23 team in all the land. Thought you were gonna jinx her there. Not quite, as here's Powell. I believe we have a foul on Britt Prince kind of hand checking or check that it's actually Potts getting called for the foul. Yeah, Potts cut off the, the cut here. So look, Stevens is there and Potts is wrapping that arm around her, prohibiting the ball. You want to keep it straight out, right? But since she's wrapping it around Stevens, it's going to get called there. And it looks like they got Brent Prince with a hand check as well on that play. Both teams in the bonus with all of the scrambling defense we've seen in this first quarter as Powell once again misses the free throw. She's over three from the charity stripe, and it's the freebies, right? When you're down 21 to eight, you've got to find ways to make the free ones. Getting all those points is going to be key if Omaha wants to drag this one back closer. Finally knocks one down, 21 to nine, as Nebraska, with about 30 ticks left in the opening quarter of the season, will have Britt Prince dribble across midcourt. Prince so far here tonight, just one of one with a couple of free throws on four points. Gets it over to Nisley. We'll see if the Huskers get another paint touch. Prince to the corner to Callen Hake, trying to get baseline, and she stepped on the sideline. Another turnover for Nebraska. And with 10 seconds left, Omaha has a chance to get into double digits on the scoreboard. And before Natalie Potts got that and one opportunity, Nebraska had three turnovers in their last four possessions. Make it four of their last five now. Powell off the handle, gives it to Stevens with two, gets inside and finishes. Strong finish to the quarter for the Omaha Mavericks as they cut the deficit to 10. Yeah, and a great penetration right here by Stevens. It's a miscommunication between Potts and Prince. Stevens just gets that extra step, flicks it off the window just in time, and cuts the deficit to 10. That's a huge momentum boost as they end the quarter because now Omaha can look at that and say, okay, we can get penetration on this Nebraska defense. Opening quarter of the season in the books. We'll have the second quarter coming up right after this here on Big Ten Plus. Jacob Schrotz and Justice Rohde back with you from Pinnacle Bank Arena. Huskers lead 21 to 11 after the opening quarter of the season. Pretty back and forth action. And we talked in the open about how important rebounding was going to be this season for Omaha. And so far, they've done a pretty good job. Yeah, they're winning the one-on-one -on -one rebounds, which is really key. And since Markowski was off the floor for large stretches of that first quarter, they were able to make up a lot in that rebounding total that they lost in that first initial four-minute stretch. So winning the one-on-one -on -one rebounds is going to be key if Omaha wants to continue their success. Markowski is back out on the court as we await the opening inbound of the second quarter. Six turnovers for each side as we've seen some very aggressive defense on the side of the Huskers. A lot of full court press, some outlet passes have been intercepted and we'll see if Omaha can settle in here in the final 10 minutes of the first half. Here's Gardner with some space, launching it from three, rims in and out. Prince collects the rebound and off the sideline, looks like some contact that pushed her out and it's another foul against Omaha. Yeah, Olsen's going to get caught here. Again, we talked about the reach around. When you try to go for a back tap, you're going to get called for a foul. And right there, you lose the gamble on that one. Spun the roulette and landed on black. So here's the two-time Nebraska State Player of the Year in Britt Prince leading the offense for the Huskers. Nisley out to Potts for three. Too long. Prince able to grab it through some contact alongside Markowski. And it looks like a foul on Markowski as well on this rebound. Yeah, they're going to go over the back as she made contact with Cave right there on the rebound attempt. And it's like we said, you know, Nebraska's got to do a better job of getting inside looks and get these bigs involved, right? And they've been able to create 
inside looks off of turnovers. They have 11 points off turnovers already, even though they're aiming on turnovers with Omaha. But getting inside looks and establishing the presence with Potts and Markowski on the inside with one-on-one -on -one seals is going to be a big key if they want to expand on this 10-point lead. Only the first foul on Alexis Markowski as Grace Cave dribbles across the timeline, matched up with Allison Widener in her first regular season game in 683 days as Nebraska forces another turnover. Widener pushes ahead to Callan Hake. Post touch for Markowski. What a steal from Gardner. Read it all the way, and Omaha comes the other way. What a great read from the free safety spot right there. Look at Gardner stepping into the lane and picking one off. A couple of seniors run in the pick and roll as Cave gives it to Olsen. Olsen, the Omaha native, gives it up to Kaichis. Kaichis, really good shooter. This time makes it into the paint and travel. Yeah, just took an extra one. And this is Kite just like you said, it loves the three ball, right? She was eighth in the Summit League and three pointers made last season per game at 1.8. So a prolific shooter, but right there gives away an, an extra possession. Allison Widener matched up with Cora Olsen up top, able to find Prince. Long pass inside to Markowski, floats it up and in. And Alexis Markowski has another bucket. She stays perfect on the afternoon. And you can see that Nebraska's overloading the side, right? So then they draw Markowski on the backside on a one-on-one -on -one with Gardner. And then it's just a simple lob pass. Just got to get it in there. Markowski catches and finishes. Great hands. Olsen drives, spins, gets in the paint. Tried to fit it in there to Gardner, who reverses, puts it up. And a travel once again on Omaha. Nearly found that space, though. And again, Omaha is starting to get rim pressure, and they're starting to find looks on the inside. If they can eliminate the self-induced errors on these traveling calls, then they're going to be in a lot better position to get themselves looks going forward. Widener hands off to Callan Hake. Back to Britt Prince. Steps back for three. A little bit long. Markowski on the rebound. Back up and in. And that's a great effort play by Markowski. Sees a loose ball flying to the second hash around the lane area and just picks it up. And she's, you know, taller than everybody else on the floor, so she gets herself a great look. Huskers all over the basketball. Here's a two-on-one against Grace Cave. Widener goes through, contact, and one. What a finish from Allison Widener. Yeah, tough physical finish. So a two-on-one, Widener says, I'm going to call my own number. Goes up through the body of Grace Cave and finishes strong. Great contest, but... Widener just skying through the air and laying that one up with a little bit of sauce. Allison Widener gets the N1 play, and Nebraska up 27 to 11 here in the first half. What an opening day for the Huskers. We talked about the way that Widener was going to be injected in this lineup after the two consecutive ACL injuries. She comes back, and she's been the floor general for this Nebraska offense after Jazz Shelley graduates, and I think she's been doing a really good job of facilitating and get people involved with only one assist, but if you're counting hockey assists and the way that she's facilitating and connecting the offense, she's been a great floor general and an engine for this Nebraska offense. In her 10 career starts prior to today, she had eight as a freshman, two as a sophomore. Nebraska is seven and three. As we take another look at this great finish from Allison Widener, waiting on the free throw attempt as now she has the basketball. Knocks it down, and it's 28 to 11 as the Huskers continue the pressure defensively. Alana Powell back out there to handle for the Mavericks. And now it's back to a man look, right? So they start with a, a zone look out of that press, and then they fall back into a man once the second pass reaches past the, the three-quarter court mark. Good poke from Potts. As Powell nearly lost it, gets to the rim. Left-hand scoop, and up and in. And we told you, she's an aggressive driver of the basketball, right? When Powell gets into the lane, she knows how to operate. She is a smooth operator in the lane, just finds a way to get to that left hand and gets it off the glass. Powell, two buckets already here today in her Omaha debut. As now we have another whistle and I believe a foul called against Omaha. 
Well, and again, that's the that's the nature of the beast, right? When you're playing physical and you're trying to deny the inside looks, you're going to give up fouls, right? And with Gardner playing physical against Markowski, trying to jostle her out of position, you're going to end up giving those fouls. It's just, what's the trade-off? Do you give more fouls to get better position? She has to find that happy medium, and I think she's figuring that out right now as they go on. The freshman from Perth, Australia, Harriet Ford, comes in to get Gardner as Prince rises up over the outstretched arms and finishes at the rim. Great elevate and celebrate right there by Prince. Britt Prince now with six points here today. Yeah, two or three on the field, but look at this. Sees Ford, six, three, doesn't matter. Go elbows up and then jump into the contact. How about that finish by the freshman? Prince averaged 27 points, 10 rebounds, and six assists as a senior at Elkhorn North High School. What a high school career for Britt Prince, who could become another one of these Big Ten Freshman of the Year type players following number 22 in white, Natalie Potts, that you saw her standing next to. And I think a lot of that has to be given credit to Amy Williams' staff, right? The talent and evaluation part of the process when you're building a college program. So they bring in Natalie Potts from O'Fallon, Missouri, and O'Fallon High School last year, and she develops. She's a great player, a Missouri Gatorade Player of the Year, and they bring her in, and she contributes right away. Now Britt Prince, who was a Gatorade Player of the Year in Point Jake, and Nebraska's three of their last three, and a lot of that is because of the points off turnovers and the looks they're getting, right? So Omaha has ten turnovers. Nebraska's got 18 points off those turnovers. Nebraska's got seven turnovers. Omaha's only put one bucket in the hole off of those turnovers, just two points for the Mavericks. We haven't seen a three in this entire game, and I don't expect that to be a large thing with the way that the pace has dictated the game. But for Omaha, when they're getting these looks, they've got to do a better job of getting numbers down the floor and helping their guards out instead of getting into one-on-two or one-on-one -on -one against the bigger player situations. Omaha did a good job at the end of the first quarter to kind of work the scoreboard back into potentially in reach. They're going to have to do that once again in the final 650 left in the first half. Alexis Markowski leads the way for Nebraska in points with eight so far as Alana Powell dribbles it across the timeline. Guarded by Britt Prince, the true freshman with all that potential on this Husker team. Tough pass into Harriet Ford, gets tied up with Callan Hake, and it is a jump ball. Great defense tying that basketball up. Well, in the interior scoring, they were giving up a lot of. They know that Ford's a very skilled player on the inside, so Hake jumps it from the rover position in that in that kind of free safety rover role where she's just the help side defender and gets her hands on the ball, and that's a big key to stopping the interior attack. Callan Hake scored 200 points a season ago. Couldn't quite get that layup down, though. Powell. Moves it in transition, tries to spin through traffic, but gets shut down. Kaitchis for three. Off the side of the rim. Not something you see very often from Katie Kaitchis missing a three-pointer. No, she doesn't miss those a lot. But again, I want to highlight, Nebraska had three players sprinting back to that nail to stop the fast break attempt of Alana Powell. And that's the key. Is can Omaha neutralize those numbers and create a better fast break situation? Here's the Florida transfer, Rimdahl, dishing it over to Britt Prince. Neither team has hit a three, combined 0 of 7. Two pretty strong three-point shooting squads. As Markowski pump fakes the three, drives down the left side, and shuffled her feet. Yeah, pretty easy call there, and a nice job defensively by Harriet Ford to just slide with the frame, right? Great contest, and you get back in front. Great help by Alana Powell to just show, and Markowski became indecisive at the rim, and she's got to do a better job of making quicker decisions and getting to where she wants to get to with the ball. Harriet Ford not afraid to mix it up physically with a center like Alexis Markowski. She used to play Australian rules football, one of the most physical sports in the country. One of yes. the most physical sports in, in the, the world, world, dude. Quite a sport if you've never seen it. Jump shot by Perry doesn't go. Rims out. Rimdahl grabs the rebound. Up ahead to Britt Prince, nearly overthrown, but Prince able to collect it. Bojan for three. Got it to go. First three-pointer of the season for either side, and it's Petra Bojan, the freshman from Croatia, dropping it through. Bring it in, why don't you? From Split, Croatia. Great soccer club out of there. Made the Champions League multiple times, but this is basketball, and she says, let me get the party started from beyond the arc. Kaichis getting harassed up top, and it's a five-second violation. Great defense once again from Callan Hake, known as an offensive player, 
But in this second quarter, she has had some defensive highlights. Yeah, and listen, she'll break down and slide. She has no problem in getting a stop, and the pressure has been the big thing. Limiting passing options off the ball, closing off passing lanes, and making ball handlers panic. Nebraska's done a great job of speeding up the offensive process of Omaha and making them get indecisive in bad areas. Moriarty checks in for Nebraska. Grace Cave in there for the Mavericks. Quick pocket pass to Bojan, who just hit the three. Couldn't finish over the outstretched hands, trying to grab her own miss. And the ball still loose. Widener collects it and got fouled. So three rebounds there, Jake, right? And the big thing is Omaha had numbers underneath. Look at this. They go two on two on the inside with a neutral advantage, and then Cave's got to do a better job sliding over and taking away the outstretched ball from Widener. But like on the inside, they're just jumping for the ball, and you're not going to win a vertical contest with Nebraska, right? Get solid, box out, and make the rebounds present themselves to you, and that way you get yourself in a great position to grab the ball and then get out to the guards who are leaking out. And that's part of why they've had a scoring drought of 2 minutes and 33 seconds because they can't grab these loose balls and these rebounds sitting right in front of them because they're worried about challenging vertically instead of staying fundamental and getting into the base. Some newcomers on the court for Nebraska with Rimdahl Bojan and Amaya Hargrove in the front court alongside Kendall Moriarty. Allison Widener hits the first free throw. 34 to 13 over halfway through the second quarter. Widener stays perfect from the stripe. She's got seven points here today in her Husker return. Powell dribbles it across the timeline, matched up with Allison Widener. Locked in on defense right now as Powell takes it to the right side, tries to work it back up top to Ford. Ford deep behind the three-point arc. She drives in, nearly a kicked ball. First to the floor with Rimdahl and Perry. And the Huskers will take possession. But I love that from both sides. Look at this. Loose ball, balls on the floor. We got multiple bodies on the floor from both sides. That's great effort because in a 50-50 situation, a 35-13 ball game, maybe the score is getting a little bit stretched to one side. Win the possessions that you can win. And for Omaha, diving on the floor with Oren Perry and get, trying for a 50-50 ball, that's great effort and a great sign of life. Moriarty drives right to the rim, tried to scoop it up. And a whistle's blown, a shooting foul, a time against Ford. And Moriarty will go to the stripe. So three turnovers for Omaha in the last 259. Great attack by Moriarty. And the reason that they're on a 7-0 run is because Nebraska has been relentlessly attacking the rim. When you can get rim pressure and force the defense to collapse, it creates foul situations, it creates easy looks for you or your teammates, and allows the game to be so much easier from a basketball standpoint because then that opens up later in the game the drive and kick option for more three-point attempts and better looks from beyond the arc. Kendall Moriarty was a big factor at the end of the season and some of that postseason success for Nebraska last year. Started the final 13 games, which obviously featured that Big Ten tournament run all the way to the championship that won March Madness win as well as she misses the first free throw attempt. But that's someone that as a stalwart of this Nebraska roster the last four years, a very valuable person to have on the wing. Right, and with Moriarty being a wing stopper, right, being long and athletic, she adds an element off the bench of defensive versatility, allowing her to switch the one through five. Perry pocket pass, and it's nearly taken away. Another jump ball, this time favored to the Mavericks. And again, when we talk about the way that Omaha's won their offense, they're getting great looks, right? They're getting into the rim, and they're putting pressure on the circle. The problem is when they get the passes, these guards are keeping the ball low, and that's where Nebraska likes to be is handsy at the low part, and that's created a lot of turnovers. Stevens catch and shoot doesn't go. Bojan once again on the rebound. Pretty impressive minutes from the freshman here in the second quarter. As she dishes over to Allison Widener, driving right, spinning back, nearly lost it, looking for someone to give it to. Goes Moriarty's way, back to Widener. The 10 to shoot. She's got Powell on the floor. Into the corner, Kendall Moriarty. Off back iron and out of bounds off the Huskers. Yeah, another good look for Nebraska. And like we talked about, the drive and then the kick option. And Moriarty, a little bit of an errant pass, but she catches it, squares herself back up, and gets a decent shot. Then multiple bodies inside. That's been part of Nebraska's offensive strategy is you put pressure on the rim, make defense collapse, and then you make them pay from beyond the arc. It's textbook stuff from Amy Williams' squad. 
First time we've seen Daria Shelby check in. She replaces Alana Powell as the lead ball handler out on the court for the Mavericks. Paige Horn dishes over to Lauren Perry. Perry holds it over her head. Long pass over to Shelby. Guarded by one of the best defenders on this Nebraska team in Kendall Moriarty. As Horn drives in, lefty scoop layup is true off the glass. Yeah, great drive by Horn. Just knows that she can get into the frame of the defender right there and then get extended on the outside part of the left hand. That's great finishing around the rim. Rimdahl drives the closeout, gets to the rim through contact, and has an and one opportunity. Yeah, and Rimdahl was a valuable piece added in the offseason for this Nebraska squad. They want another guard defender, right? Somebody who prides themselves on doing the dirty work. Well, right here, Rimdahl, this is a simple basketball play. You catch the defender slow-footed. It's a right-handed rip to the, to the inside against Lauren Perry and then get into the body of Stevens and finish and go to the line for an extra textbook stub from a veteran player. Albert E. Rimdahl, member of the Danish national team, started 50 games for the Gators over the past two seasons. Her first free throw is up and in. Three-point play converted for Nebraska as they now lead 38-15 with just under three to go first half. Shelby trying to set up some sort of offense and nearly gets it taken away. Foul as Rimdahl came in there. Pressure applied by Kendall Moriarty. The Huskers will make a change. Yeah, and Shelby's a person who likes and, and, and who, she enjoys solving Rubik's cubes in her spare time. But this this game has kind of been like a Rubik's cube. It's a complex puzzle that's always changing. And with the way that Nebraska's played defense, they're applying pressure. It's like a time limit when you're solving Rubik's cubes. So a new puzzle for her and the Mavericks to figure out. Speaking of the time limit, Omaha has struggled to get it across half court at times early in this first half. That shot no good off the window. And Nebraska speeds ahead now with Logan Nisley out to Widener. Paint touch from Markowski. She gets doubled. Now it's one on one. Fader jumper goes up off the rim and out. And Nisley collects the rebound, puts it up and in with a foul. And again, it's just a matter of want to right now. And right now, Nebraska wants to rebound and collect extra looks. And Nisley right there, Markowski goes to the fader, and naturally two defenders draw. That leaves open space. Nisley, Nisley darts in, grabs the rebound, and then puts it right back up and finds an easy bucket for herself plus an extra. Part of the All-Big Ten freshman team last, ye last year, and she converts on the free throw. 12-2 to two run for Nebraska over the last four minutes and 44 seconds as this second quarter has been dominated by the Big Red. Olsen up top, driving right through Petrie, picks her dribble up, gives it to Cave, baseline, out to Shelby for three, way short. Widener able to collect the rebound, here's a three on two, outside to Nisley, her quick three, is fouled as she missed it short, but the contact definitely impacted that one. Contact impacted it, right? But again, Nebraska sprinting in transition, Widener to stop the kick, the penetration and getting rim pressure, and then the immediate kick to the open player. Great job by Allison Widener. Great job by Nebraska sprinting down and getting numbers in the fast break. Let's go to Olivia Davenport now with more. In the second quarter, now every Nebraska player dressed on the bench has played minutes in this game. And that's got to be so, so confidence building for Amy Williams over there as she can go to any player on her bench if someone needs a rest and everyone from the bench can produce. We've seen Petrie come off the bench and Petra Bojan come off the bench for Markowski and have some production in the lane. Now the depth for Nebraska is going to be incredibly important this year in the Big Ten with how many teams are going to provide a challenge. There's no easy games this season in the conference. And there's never been an easy game in the Big Ten conference, right? Even look back to the Rutgers game last year where they were a quad four team and they went and came into Pinnacle Bank Arena and beat Nebraska at home. There is no easy game in the Big Ten, especially with four new teams added. You're going to play 17-plus conference games. Powell against Prince, got it sent back, and Markowski keeps it high to collect the rebound. Here comes Kendall Coley pushing ahead with Prince. Nisley stops, nearly shot it. Here's Britt Prince now, trying to step it back, dribble it off her leg as Markowski tries to set the offense up. 
And another three-second violation. Huskers will turn it over away from the ball once again. Yeah, second one that goes against Petrie, and she's just got to be more aware of where she is in the lane. But going back to what you said about the depth, right, It's this is the reason why this is the number 23 team in the country is because every piece can contribute on the roster. There is really no weak link to this Nebraska team in terms of contributing to a winning effort. The Huskers bring back around 65% of their scoring per game from a season ago as Powell looks for some space against Britt Prince. Over to Vidal, and she got it stripped. Nisley driving on transition. She'll slow it down now, give it to Markowski. The fake, the drive against Shelby, keeps it high, and an offensive foul, a charging against Markowski. And once again, Omaha will take the basketball down 44 to 15. How about that call by Chuck Gonzalez on the baseline? Give me the punch on that one, Chuck. Markowski goes into the body. Great take, great job by Omaha to slide over and get set on the baseline. Established position, then that's an easy call for Chuck Gonzalez. Punch it the other way, big fella. Alexis Markowski will check out as Natalie Potts returns to the court here in PBA. Less than 50 ticks to go in the first half as the Huskers maintain a big lead over Omaha. Olsen over to the left side. Now Daria Shelby matched up with the taller Natalie Potts. Powell has had the ball in her hands quite a bit this first half. She draws the matchup of Potts on the perimeter with less than 10 to shoot, now less than five to shoot. Powell along the left side, getting clamped up, splits the double team, and got it rejected at the shot clock. What a defensive possession for Nebraska. You're right, multiple players switching, so you get Potts involved, you get Petrie involved, you get Britt Prince involved. We get Logan Nisley stepping up on the weak side and getting a block at the end. A team effort to completely constrict the Omaha offensive attack and stifle them and giving themselves one last shot before going to the halftime break. Britt Prince dribbles it across half court with 10 to go here in the first half. Huskers could take the final shot if they want to. Prince handoff to Nisley into the corner. Natalie pops for three. She cans it to end the first half. And the Huskers lead 47 to 15. And we talked about how she had worked all offseason on improving that three-point shot. Wide open lick from the corner. Give it to me. Dip into the pot one more time, why don't you, Natalie? Nebraska dominant stretch, 19 to two run over the last six minutes and 57 seconds of that quarter. Complete control by the Big Red going into the halftime break. Potts 25% from three a season ago. Here tonight, she's one of two. Entertaining first half in Lincoln on opening day in the sport of college basketball. 47 to 15, don't go anywhere. Second half action coming up after this on Big Ten Plus. Second half action coming up between Nebraska and Omaha. We'll take another look at all these turnovers that the Nebraska defense was able to force first half. Yeah, look at the steals comparison. Nebraska has had a ton of turnovers for it. They're forced 15 turnovers on Omaha. As a team, nine total steals for Nebraska. Omaha has only managed to get two. All of the layups that Nebraska's generating off of this, 23 points off turnovers. I'd say check that box for the Big Red. With more on the Husker defense, let's send it now to Olivia Davenport for more. Yeah, I think coming into this game, 
everyone knew Nebraska was going to be able to score, but something that maybe was a little bit more of a concern was how the defense was going to hold up. And with all of these players coming in and playing, we've seen lots of fresh legs. Nebraska only allowed four points in the second quarter, so defense holding up well as well as the offense. Omaha is going to have to find a little bit of momentum going into the second half, a little bit of a frustrating first half, scoring only 15 points. So going to have to find a way to get something going, get inside more, maybe get to the free throw line and nail those free throws. Back to you guys. Thanks, Olivia. Nebraska last year defensively second best in the Big Ten at only 64 points allowed per game. And they're going to start this season off, unless something crazy happens with this Omaha offense, that average is going to be even lower. Yeah, unless Omaha goes full Golden State Warriors in Game 7 of the 2018 Western Conference Finals, this bad boy is not going to look good for them in the scoring margin. But it's going to look great for Nebraska's defensive numbers. 47-15 as Britt Prince starts the second half. High pass to Markowski. Callan Hake baseline and through contact for a foul. Dan, again, like we talked about, Nebraska getting the ball inside early. Markowski with a great skip pass, and then Hake re-attacks. It's the aggressive nature of this Nebraska offense. They know they don't have to shoot a bunch of three-pointers. When you can continue, when you can continuously and constantly get rim pressure, it makes your life a whole lot easier as an offense. Aaliyah Moore called for the foul. She's got three now to start with the second half. She's only played five minutes in this contest. Moore was someone that we expected to be a big factor, especially on the rebounding effort for this Omaha team. Yeah, somebody that we thought would contribute a whole lot, but she hasn't just seen a whole lot of run. It's been a lot of Alana Powell at the guard spot. Grace Cave dribbles across against Allison Widener. Outside Gardner, she draws the matchup of Alexis Markowski. Here's Grace Cave with some space. Can't finish the three-pointer. Omaha now 0 of 7 from three so far here today. Outside for Callan Hake. Her three-pointer hits iron, doesn't fall. Three-point shooting not strong combined for either of these teams. Just 2 of 14 between Nebraska and Omaha as we come into this second half now. Moore. Deep into the corner, here's Gardner with a three-point try, a bit short. Both these teams starting out from distance. Hasn't fallen yet, though. Widener takes it along the right side, fakes a spin, gives it to Potts, tries to get a paint touch for Markowski, goes sailing out of bounds and another turnover. Huskers say it should be Nebraska basketball, but official Chuck Gonzalez decides that it's going to be Mavericks basketball. I think that's probably the right call there. Don't know if there's a clear touch of the arm of Cora Olsen, but again, that pass just a little bit too high. Markowski and Potts not quite on the same page. Threw it a little bit behind Markowski did Potts, and that's how Omaha has the ball in the offensive half. Tough offensive day so far for Grace Cave. Just one of seven from the field. She's been over 10 points per game the last two seasons. Driving effort from Moore, traveled, and she picked up her dribble. And that's another Omaha turnover. You know, that's the fourth traveling call we've seen against Omaha today. It's just not getting, not playing off two feet, right? Trying to stop at the one, two. Just play off two feet, pivot, and then use your passing options out of that triple threat position. And off to Allison Widener. She gets down the right side and finishes with the left hand. It's a great lefty scoop by Widener. Know, know that she's a natural lefty, right? So. Omaha does the right thing and force her to go right, but give her way too much space, and then she gets back to that dominant hand. Great rim pressure again by Allison Widener. Allison Widener now with nine points, nearly leading the team. And another turnover pass skips away, so the Huskers will take over. 51 to 15 advantage. And Omaha just looks mentally frazzled right now. Like there's something disjointed on the offensive end. They just got to start to get easy looks at the rim and get in system and find a way to get some better offensive looks. Pass bounced off Markowski's hands. And again, the ball will go to Omaha. Trying to get Markowski a bit involved offensively to start the second half, but the passes just continue to bounce off the hands. Yeah, they've been a little bit too hot to handle, right? And the thing for her is she's doing a good job getting herself in positions. They just need to be a softer touch pass to get her an easy pass to catch and then do work off of. Out to Cave once again. Senior to senior pick and roll. Good swing pass to the corner. Aaliyah Moore's three doesn't fall. Good setup by Cave, but Omaha goes 
scoreless on that last possession. Strong drive to the left side from the freshman, Britt Prince. That's nasty right there from Prince. Pump fake, get back to your right side. Hesitation, go back left, hang and finish. That's great stuff from the freshman. Cave taking it herself, now to the corner. Cora Olsen, shot doesn't fall. Gardner on the rebound. Missed it short again through the pressure of Alexis Markowski. And right in front, we have a blocking foul on Cora Olsen. As Britt Brit Prince tried to take it down the court, we see another look, just kind of a bang-bang play on the catch. Yeah, bang-bang play. Olsen tried to slide into position, just didn't quite get there in time to set her feet. And so Britt Prince able to get that blocking foul. But again, we talk about Nebraska wanting to push immediately off the rebound. They grab it. It's a quick outlet pass, and they're trying to get up towards the middle of the floor as fast as possible. Potts with the Euro step, and it falls. Didn't know Old Fallon, Missouri had a European connection. How about traveling across a different co country? Nice little finish that time from Natalie Potts. She leads the Huskers with 12 points tonight. Strong start to the season in her sophomore year. Good defense that time, and a timeout on the floor. Coach Banks wants to talk it over with her Omaha squad as it's 55 to 15. Huskers up big here in Lincoln on Big Ten Plus. Huskers have the 55 to 15 lead about halfway through the third quarter. Big reason for it has just been the offensive efficiency of Nebraska firing on all cylinders. Yeah, they're 20 for 35 from the field. That's good for 57.1% for those of you math majors at home. Shooting 76% from the free throw line. So they've been efficient from the charity stripe, efficient from the field, and they haven't had to use three-point shot at all. They've just been forcing a lot of turnovers. Grace Cave trying to get the Omaha offense rolling for the first time in this second half. Good defense by Prince being applied. Gets it into the corner, back out to Kaichis. Back to the corner for Aaliyah Moore. She drives the closeout of Rimdahl and draws a foul. Maybe the first points in the last few minutes for Omaha could come right here. Yeah, and again, Omaha's needed to get good looks at the rim, get rim pressure. Aaliyah Moore providing that right away. Completely out of the timeout, a great design by Kerry Banks to get her a one-on-one -on -one drive, and then she makes the most of it now. Can she capitalize at the free throw line? Moore's first try, rims in and out. So still 55 to 15. Huskers have Markowski, Potts, Rimdahl, Callan Hake, and Britt Prince out there. As Potts collects the rebound, an 0 for 2 trip to the stripe as Rimdahl takes it along the left side. Markowski trying to post up. She hasn't had too many touches in this second half. Potts turns it over. Good deflection that time up top along the three-point line. As Olsen stops in the paint, gets it to Moore. Mid-range jumper, a little bit soft. Gardner steps up. She'll step into a three and misses it wide. 
And we have a foul on the floor as Olsen got knocked down. Yeah, that's just part of the, the battle inside. You can see getting tangled up here with Natalie Potts and fell down a little bit. You know, just just happens when you get the feet tangled and, you know, Natalie Potts gets called for the foul. But, you know, down, down 40, you know, Omaha's find their way back into this thing. Olsen steps up, trying to feed it to a cutting Grace Cove who is able to collect the basketball and finishes the layup. A nice job by Grace Cave right there, just getting the cut and then a great feed from Olsen. Even though it took a deflection, she was able to get the cut, knew that she had a, a cutter hip level in Cave and just threw the pass with confidence. Callan Hake with 12 to shoot. Gets a screen from Markowski, trying to get it inside to the big center. And again, the pass is stolen away. Here comes Aliyah Moore giving it up to Grace Cave. Cave, the senior from Weeping Water, Nebraska, guarded by Alexis Markowski out on the perimeter. Now look at this horn set here, Jake. They had a screen either side. Olsen trying to take it left side. Markowski still on the perimeter, and she rejects that one from Olsen. Sent out of bounds as Markowski showing some quick footwork there. It just slides her feet. Great job by Markowski. Olsen trying the inside scoop. Get that weak stuff out of here. I don't care what the score is. Alexis Markowski getting it done on the interior. Another timeout on the floor with five seconds to shoot on the shot clock. Five minutes to go in the third quarter. It's 55-17 in Lincoln on opening day on Big Ten Plus. had an opportunity, just darts in, just kind of pokes the hand at it and is able to poke the possession away, cause a jump ball, and Omaha able to retain possession with a fresh shot clock. Poked away for a moment by Callan Hake as Moore matches up with Hargrove. Switching on to Grace Cave, and an offensive foul, kind of a reach around as I think down low with Markowski, that's where the contact happened. Yeah, down low with Markowski, she gets tied up, and Offensive foul goes against Omaha. They just really haven't had anything going their way throughout the course of this game. And we see, and it was actually with Britt Prince as Moore was trying to get down low to find some space offensively. So Prince will dribble it up for Nebraska. Three of four from the field, eight points in her Husker debut. Out to Callan Hake with some space, launching a three off the back iron. Offensive rebound for Markowski, back up and in. And Alexis has the Huskers back on the board. Yeah, Markowski now going to find herself in double figures here with 10 points. She's been dominant in a short stretch. Nebraska really dipping deep into their bench throughout the course of this game. Markowski with eight rebounds as well. She had 19 double-doubles last season, 40 of them in her career. We'll see if she adds another one here on opening night. As a foul down low, we'll keep the ball with Omaha. Yeah, like you said, Markowski averaged a double-double last year. When you look at her numbers, 15.7 points, 10.5 rebounds a night. This is a player who is a dominant interior force for this Nebraska Cornhusker women's basketball program and has been a staple there now for four years now. She's tied for first in Nebraska career history with those 40 career double-doubles. If she adds two more boards here today, she will have that sole position, expecting a lot more from her as we continue on this season. Widener fighting for that ball. Ford is able to take it away. Olsen's three drops through. Cora Olsen sinks it from downtown, and it's 57 to 20. We have a travel against Nebraska trying to move in transition. Moriarty hit the floor hard. Yeah, another bang bang play as Olsen that time got in position right on time and just cut off. Moriarty just hesitated right there. And then just a collision of epic proportions along that sideline. Hope everybody's okay. It just came right down on Cora Olsen's right ankle. She seems to be all right. So here's Alana Powell. Been handling the basketball quite a bit in the first half. Doing it now in the second. Gets it to Cave. She'll launch a three and hit it once again. Back-to-back -back triples for the Mavericks in the third quarter. As it's 57-23 now. Moriarty driving into the paint, floats it up over Ford, missed it long. 
Chase down for the loose ball. Nice rebound by Hargrove. Here's Rimdahl for three. Couldn't get it to fall. Quickly up ahead, Perry collects the pass, and she'll cross over against Rimdahl. Lost the basketball. Widener with a head of steam gets it to Moriarty. She stops and travels once again. Tried to set herself up for that jumper, but just a little bit of a stumble. Yeah, right there, you got a jump stop into a two foot set, right? This time she tries to one two and she ends up traveling. Just stop, two foot, set your feet, and then get your base up to get the jump shot. Little things that Nebraska can work on going forward. Yeah, I think we're seeing some early season kind of struggles and turnovers that probably won't be happening in the next couple of weeks as these teams continue to get better. Here's Perry, puts a shoulder into Rimdahl, just missed it short, but it's Harriet Ford collecting the rebound and the bucket. How about a little run here for Omaha? Give me a 6-0, 8-0 run now over the last minute and 12. The Mavs have something cooking here late in the third. And Coach Williams takes a timeout. She's frustrated with the way the Huskers have been playing over the last couple of minutes. And here into the timeout, the Huskers do lead by 22. I check that 32 points as we head into the timeout on Big Ten Plus. Taking a look at this last three from Cora Olsen that dropped through. Grace Cave as well. It's back-to-back -back threes into the Nebraska timeout. We'll see what the Huskers can draw up after a bit of a stoppage. 2.30 and counting in the third quarter. Huskers do have a big lead, but Omaha starting to get it going. And once again, another turnover. Passes starting to fit through the hands of this Husker front court. That's five Nebraska turnovers in the last four minutes and 26 seconds. They're on a two minute and seven second scoring drought. Omaha couples that with an 8-0 run. Mavs starting to really figure it out, turning up the heat defensively. Cave handles the ball up top. Just hit the three, the last possession. And we have another foul, this time defensively against Nebraska. Let's go to Olivia Davenport here. Yeah, Omaha finding a little bit of a spark, going on a little bit of run back-to-back -back threes to kind of light up their offense. We'll see how that translates into this late part of the third quarter. No doubt the offense has started to pick up a bit for Omaha. Here's Powell with some space, tries to go to a floater that drops through off the rim. Nice job by Alana Powell to add another point onto the scoreboard for the Mavericks on this 10-0 scoring run. Rimdahl right side, matched up with Perry. She kicks it to a wide open Moriarty for three. Bit long, and Omaha once again taking over in transition. Lauren Perry quickly ahead, rejected by Kendall Moriarty. How about the effort from Moriarty? Missed the three on one in, you hustle back. Perry tries to put it up, and then a little give me that from Kendall Moriarty chasing it down. Like Lisa Leslie back in the day, why don't you? Great hustle from both ends from Kendall Moriarty. Does have quite a bit of a size advantage over Lauren Perry, just five foot seven. Kendall Moriarty at six foot one, but she will check out of this ball game alongside Petrie and Hargrove. So the Huskers bring in Bojan and Logan Nisley as well. Bojan gave the Huskers some pretty solid minutes, but there was a foul that they ruled on that last play. So Perry has free throws coming up. Yeah, and Bojan added the first three of the game. She's going to provide a lot vers versatility-wise for this Nebraska offensive attack with the way that she can stretch the floor and at least present herself as a considerable threat from beyond the arc. 11-0 scoring run over the last two minutes and counting for Omaha. Widener goes behind the back through some traffic. Good pressure applied from Cave up top near half court. Shot clock winding down as Cave continues to poke at the basketball. Widener gets to the elbow, spins into the paint, uses her strong hand in the rim in for Widener. Nearly rolled out, but 
kind of got that home roll. How about circling the drain right there? Shades of Kobe in the All-Star game. Just managed to find a way to ring around the rosy and fall on down. Good bucket from Widener playing off two feet. Fourth bucket here today in her return to the Husker lineup in regular season play. 11 points for Allison Widener. It's been over 680 days since she played a regular season basketball game. Here's Nisley with the steal and the score and the foul. And one for Logan Nisley and the sophomore has a chance for a three-point play. Oh my goodness, she stole the cookie and then she took another one with her. How about Logan Nisley? Get out on the break, easy right hand layup, playing through the contact of Cora Olsen, trying to chase her down. Great hustle and a great bucket by Logan Nisley, playing heads up basketball. She converts on the three point play as Logan Nisley now with nine points here today. Off the bench for Nebraska. Alana Powell matched up one on one with Widener. She goes and communicates with Kerry Banks, the head coach for Omaha, as they try to set up some form of set with 10 to shoot on the shot clock. Now a foul away from the ball. Looks like maybe a hand check against, I believe that was Widener who got called for that one. It was. So that sends Omaha to the stripe once again in the bonus. And Omaha is for their last five from the field. So this Mavericks offense, after a really rough first half, where they only put up 15 points, they almost match that now in the third quarter. Great adjustment after the timeout by Kerry Banks to get this Maverick squad juiced up and get them on a run. They figured a couple things out. They started applying more pressure to the rim, and now the three balls falling. Things start to come together for the Mavs. Powell struggled at the stripe in the first half, but is able to convert right there. 62 to 30 now as Omaha continues to just chip away at the scoreboard. Nisley turns it over almost instantly. Here's Cave with 22 seconds and counting in the third quarter clock. Omaha working up top. We'll see if Cave elects to take the last shot. Good defense by Widener. Cave with a quick pass to the corner. And that jumper hits the side of the backboard by Perry. Less than 10 to go, third quarter. Widener dribbles it across. Widener to the paint. Hangs in the air, tries to shoot it up. Rebound by Bojan, and she puts it in. As the clock expires, the Huskers finally get back on the scoreboard. That's a great effort by Petra Bojan. Just in the right spot, keeps the ball high, doesn't dip it down. Knows that she has little time, just catches it, and then a little touch off of the right hand. That's great awareness, great fundamental basketball by Petra Bojan to get the Huskers a little bit of life going into the fourth. Three quarters into opening day here in the sport of college basketball. Huskers lead by 34 points at home as they open the season against the Mavericks on Big Ten Plus. Head coach for Nebraska, Amy Williams, has her team up big heading into the final 10 minutes of this ball game. Former Summit League Coach of the Year with South Dakota before she came here to Nebraska. So some Summit League connections between Amy Williams, the Mavericks, and also their conference. And a good friend of ours calling Summit League basketball now, Connor Clark, voice of the Oral Roberts basketball and baseball teams. For sure. So here comes Powell. Gets it to Cave. Omaha ended the third quarter with some strong offense. Stevens three misses long. Huskers take the rebound. Both of Omaha's threes went down in the third quarter. They're two of 14 today. Nebraska two of 10 from downtown. Nisley from the corner and it's true. Well, just when you talk about him making two, they heard you and said, let's up the ante a little bit. Great drive, and we talked about it. When you penetrate the lane enough, you're going to get open kicks and open shots. And right there, Nebraska gets a good one, and Nisley knocks it down. Logan Nisley, the most retor returning three-pointers made from last season, with 59 of them only behind Jazz Shelley. Another deep jumper that time by Cave doesn't fall. So Widener pushes ahead with Britt Prince. Gets inside and didn't even see Allie Stevens. Quick turnover for Nebraska as now Cave will slow it down. Grace Cave has played 25 big minutes 
here today for Omaha as she's tried to lead this offense. Cave driving left to the free throw line, spins, shoots over Widener and gets it to fall. Put Cave at nine points, tie it for the, the team high, but she's been largely quiet, just hasn't had a lot of great looks today. Potts with a quick up and under move, didn't get it to fall. Tried to go off the glass, left it short though. So Cave slowing things down. It was high paced basketball early in this game. It seems like both these teams have kind of settled in and maybe been worn down a bit. Yeah, and obviously fatigue's taking a toll. It's the first game of the season. It's the opening day of college basketball. The greatest day in the history of our country, in my opinion, but it's a great day, and both these teams are fatigued. And that's the thing is it's an early season game. You're playing 40 minutes, 40 full minutes for the first time. You're going to be tired, and it's just figuring out how to play when you're tired. Entry pass to Markowski works out as Markowski now has missed just one shot here tonight, six of seven from the field. 12 points, eight, uh, nine rebounds. She's one rebound away from her 41st career double-double would be the most all-time in Nebraska history. Yeah, and there were concerns after last year when she missed a lot of easy layups. It's that one, kind of a hooking layup from Cave over the outstretched arms of Markowski. Really nice finish, quickly the other way. Prince attacks with the left hand and scores. That's a dynamic scoring ability that Prince presents, right? When you get it, she's quick to decide which way she wants to attack, and attacking out of the triple threat, she's going to be a really awesome player for Nebraska this year. Ten points on just six shots. Is that loose ball? Markowski chases after it, and she's the first to the floor. Here comes a breakaway. Potts all the way, and she finishes. One of the dunk right there, but Potts settles for the easy layup. Markowski setting history here. What a prolific player she's been for this Nebraska program. And she's been really efficient tonight. After opportunities that she would miss last year, she's cleaned up the interior finishing. She's been a dominant presence, and she's been efficient. And she is deadly offensively when she is efficient. Look at the breakaway. Wanted Potts to slam it home. She says, I'll just take it off the window instead. 12 points, 10 rebounds, eight of them on the defensive glass, but Alexis Markowski now with 41 career double-doubles, and she has the all-time leading mark in Husker history. We'll step aside real quick and come back with more fourth-quarter action between Nebraska and Omaha on Big Ten Plus. to get the teammates involved, and then she's been a monster on the glass for Nebraska, and that's been the big thing. The Cornhuskers have doubled up the Mavericks in the score column, and that's a big reason why, is they've been dominating the rebounding margin, 36 to 27. The last time these teams matched up, it was a couple of seasons ago in which Nebraska won 100 to 30. A little bit closer here today as Powell rises up for that jumper and banks it home. Alana Powell. Puts two more on the board for Omaha. And I think that's a testament to how Carrie Banks has constructed this roster, right? She overhauled it with 10 newcomers, and these newcomers have played big minutes for them and contributed a lot. Hake gets baseline, finds Allison Widener for three, rims in and out. Markowski on the offensive glass, up and in. And again, she just continues to have a great motor and finding spots to grab rebounds and help the team out. Now 14 points and 11 boards. Another double-double from Alexis Markowski, one of the best, if not the best, rebounder in the entire Big Ten Conference. As now we have a foul on that drive. Looks like Hargrove will be credited with the foul, so Omaha will hold the basketball, and Nebraska makes some substitutions. Bojan, Coley, and Rimdahl will step in. As Omaha will look to make this inbound and find another bucket. The offense has been a lot better here in the second half, but with just such a big deficit, it's going to be hard to really look at this game as a big positive to start the season. Yeah, you're right, but there's little things that they can look at on film and take away from that. Powell's handed the ball really well without turning it over a ton as, oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my. She just drops Callen Hake right on cue and drops a bucket as well. Boy, she made me look like a genius there. Callan Haig taking it the other way for Nebraska now with about 5-17 and counting in this ball game. Coley up top gets a screen from the freshman Hargrove. Whistle, and they're just trying to decide on the foul. 
I think they're going to call it defensively. Can we get a replay of that shot, please? My goodness. Look at this. As the, They're going to get the screen right there, and Powell trying to fight through that. As Powell getting down. Look at this. Oh, bumper off and send her back to Mars. My goodness. A lot of Powell has been really impressive and has been driving the offensive attack. One more time. Oh, my goodness. Rimdahl drops in a mid-range jumper as the Huskers lead 77-38. Alberti Rimdahl now with five points in her Husker debut. Nebraska is, they're pretty comfortable with these Florida transfers making an impact right away. Think of Merritt Beeson on the Husker volleyball team putting together all American type performances these past two seasons as Powell once again powering her way in for two. Yeah, now she's got 15 points on the day. That leads the Omaha Mavericks. She's been a big spark. And the big thing about her, she's only a sophomore, right? Transferred in. She was a freshman in a community college last year. And they're going to have many more years of her production to look forward to. Bojan with another three here today. She goes two for two from downtown in her Husker debut. The freshman contributing early on as Powell looks to continue this hot streak. She's pressured up, up high and gives it to Gardner. Gardner with a head of steam right into Bojan, and she gets fouled. How about Bojan? Eight points, three for five on the day, four rebounds. She's been a big spark off the bench, giving them great minutes when Alexis Markowski goes to the bench. She picks up the foul there, but three of their last three for both sides, and Petra Bojan as a freshman has been really impressive so far. It's starting to look like this Nebraska front court is really going to be the strength of this year's squad as Stevens drives in on Bojan, got it smacked away. And just a clean block. That's just a size advantage, right? Stevens trying to drive in, and Bojan at 6'3 just puts the old branch out and just sends that breeze right on by. Ali Stevens now one of five from the field today. There's the outstretched arms of Kendall Coley making a difference. Gardner's three drops through. And that's the big thing is if Omaha is able to get stretch ability from Gardner at the center position and really expand the way they play offense. They're going to be in a really good spot in the Summit League. Nice little swing pass to Coley, whose three drops. It's a three-point party at the end of this ball game, Justice. Yeah, we talked about the three-point struggles, and then they go and make us look like a bunch of dummies with the way that now they're raining all these in. I mean, sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong, and now both teams finding the stroke from beyond the arc as the game's coming to a close. Shelby kicks it over to Horn, who spins near the paint against Hargrove. Outside to Vidal, driving in, tried to Euro step and traveled around Callen Hake. You know, that would be legal in the WNBA is the big thing, but Vidal got caught with one too many steps here. It was a good move, but took an extra one that she shouldn't have and turns it back over to Nebraska. But now look at the Mavericks with some pressure. Callen Hake going right down the lane. Nice little pocket pass to Bojan, who takes advantage, laying it up and in. As Petra Bojan in double figures here today. And how impressive has she been? Just putting herself in great areas to get easy buckets. And when she's been able to stretch the floor, she's looked really confident. The touches look great. Vidal to the paint, back out to. And with 10 to shoot, Daria Shelby tries to draw something up into the post. It's Stevens who goes right into Callan Hake for the turnover. And some contact and a blocking foul. Vidal called for it as Hake was going down the sideline. Yeah, and again, these Omaha players have really tried to jump in front and cause some offensive fouls, but they're just not getting in position in time along the sideline. You've got to slide over, plant your foot on this sideline, this white touch line, and set yourself fully and then embrace the contact. That's how you're going to get those calls. Gallen Hake hands off to Amaya Hargrove, spinning into the paint, rising up for a jump shot, nearly fell. Shelby, long outlet pass. Vidal tried to swing it, nearly lost the ball. Off the leg, and Gallen Hake once again takes the ball away. Through traffic, and once again a reach and foul. Omaha really <laughs> causing some pain for Gallen Hake. She's been fouled a lot tonight. Yeah, I mean, hey, they're getting their hands in there, trying to poke the ball away in transition, and Hake's keeping it low. She's taking a lot of contact, but, you know, it's just part of the game of the basketball. When you drive into a crowd, sometimes you're just going to get hammered, and it just happens. It's been a tough offensive night for Callan Hake from the field, just one of six overall, and missed both of her threes. She's been a good three-point shooter while in a Nebraska uniform. 
As they get it out to her on the perimeter, Bojan once again rises up, and that seems to be her play, comfortable in the post. Yeah, she is really smooth and efficient, can, you, can do it off of multiple sets of footwork, can drop step either way, has the hook game she can go to, has a nice mid-range extended out earlier beyond the three-point arc. She's a really promising player, only a freshman for this Nebraska squad. Two-on-one break, and Moriarty elects to try to pass it to Coley. Had a shot at laying it up, but ended up nearly turning it over. Yeah, unselfish play by Moriarty, but a great job by Vidal to get her hands in the way and eliminate the passing lane that Moriarty wanted to throw it through. Another entry pass into Bojan as Hake gets reached around and fouled once again. Yeah, and you could see on that out-of-bounds play, they wanted to use Bojan as the hub because they wanted to get that down screen coming out for Hake, who was the inbounder, and then look for a slip on the backside to Bojan, but Omaha had that one snipped out from the help side. So here comes an inbound for Kendall Moriarty. Less than a minute 30 to go on opening day. Huskers with a big advantage as Kendall Coley swings it to Kendall Moriarty, who spins into the paint, takes a wild shot with her left hand, and I believe she's got free throws coming. Yeah, and this is the big thing, is now you're playing for film, right? It's 87 to 43. Now you're just working on getting shots and being sound. And for Nebraska, the big thing we want to preach is when you get into games against Big Ten competition, you're going to have to find ways to get to the rim even when you're going to your depth pieces off the bench. So how do you find ways to get to the rim and convert in late game situations? And this is a big teaching moment for both of these teams. And for Omaha, it's now about staying fundamentally sound, sliding, helping, tagging, communicating on the defensive end. Moriarty finally drops in a free throw as she was 0 for everything prior to that one. 0 of 4 from the field, three missed three-pointers, and now 1 of 4 from the stripe. Huskers lead 88-43 with about a minute 20 left. Shelby matched up with Moriarty. Strong showing from the number 23 team in the country to open up the season. Nebraska will be back in action this upcoming weekend here inside Pinnacle Bank Arena. Horn drives down, got rejected by Coley. No, a foul. Yeah, and that's the problem. When, when you have length and versatility, sometimes you get a little SWAT happy, right? A great drive here underneath the baseline, and then Coley goes down, hits her on the arm first before the ball. That's the problem when you have a length advantage. You tend to get complacent getting SWAT happy instead of just staying in your space, sliding along, and cutting off any shooting angle. And she's going to do a better job right there, does Kendall Coley, just getting into a better position to either not foul or get a better angle at the block. So the freshman Paige Horn from Scotts Bluff, Nebraska, is able to get one of two free throws. Same team, and Petrie falls over. And they call that a travel, as Petrie got knocked over by Bojan, her teammate. So Omaha once again with the basketball. Turnovers very high from both teams, over 20 from Nebraska and Omaha each here tonight. Yeah, it's something that both teams will really want to clean up as the season goes along. Can't have 20-plus turnovers and expect to win most nights. Stevens connects on the fourth three-pointer of the game from Omaha, her first of the night. Five points for the sophomore, Ali Stevens. Inside to Petrie, swings it to the corner. Callan Hake trying to get baseline, has to get it back out to Kendall Coley. Less than six to shoot on the shot clock. Hake steps back for three. Missed it a little bit short, and it goes careening out of bounds with 16.9 on the clock. Yeah, late clock, you just got to get something up. So Hake looks on the board. What is she, what's the best option she has? She feels that it's a step back three and didn't get the, the most amount of touchdown that shot as she wanted a good contest there by the Mavs, and now just going to play this one out to the final horn. Omaha with likely the final possession of this ball game. Moore driving in, and she gets fouled. Yeah, that was Moriarty from the weak side. Stuck the arm in as Moore was going into the body. Look, you can see it right here. Moriarty's going to swipe down on that arm right there and pick up the foul late. You know, with .9 seconds left, it's going to allow the Mavs to add a couple more points, get something else on film, and add to the statue. Aaliyah Moore missed that free throw way short. 72.7% free throw shooter. 
a season ago at Loyola Chicago. She played in 26 games for them last year. As now the final second ticks off the clock, a 40-point victory for Nebraska, 88-48, to 48, as what a strong showing it was on opening day for these Huskers. How about the Big Red coming out and doing what they do best, dominating the rebounding margin, 38-30. to 30. Omaha ended up getting more offensive rebounds due to the quality of shot, but how about 58% from the field? Extremely efficient afternoon from these Huskers. It doesn't matter that they shot 33% from three because they were getting what they wanted at the rim at will. How about the 41st career double-double setting the record for Alexis Markowski? I believe we will hear from Markowski a little bit later on, but the three-point shooting was something to definitely watch for as we see a couple of the Huskers doing the worm. They're feeling good after the first game, Justice. Feeling really good, and that's the thing is, there are things that you can take from this game, right? In a, in a mid-afternoon game, you, it's a noon tip-off. There's a bunch of kids in the crowd. The energy on opening day was feeling good, right? So how do you come out and make an impression? You come out and you push the pace early. You cause turnovers. 